Welcome to Uncommon and Obscure, where I take a look at rare, unheard of, or downright bad games. Today's game is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood, the PlayStation 2. This game is a Japanese exclusive and released to celebrate the 20th anniversary of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The game is almost an exact copy of the Phantom Blood story from the anime, but with lots of text dumps and lackluster fights. I'm not entirely sure if it shows every detail of the series, but maybe that's a good thing. First, let's start off with how they show the story sequences. Something I noticed right away was that they really wanted to go full out and to not cut any dialogue. The dialogue is fully voiced, and I commend them for that, but in total, it's just a giant text up to unravel a story. If I were to compare it to anything, it's like a kinetic visual novel. With no choices, and you just kind of read the story until a battle happens. The text sequences do have background pictures, and they also have slides that show an important scene, object, or action. That's the most you get out of the story sections, I'm afraid. The game itself is about 70% story sequences, and that leaves 30% of the entire game for battle sequences. In short, you'll listen to the main characters of JoJo's talk for an obscene amount of time, with nothing to really keep you interested. The voices are fine, and the backgrounds are also fine. The feel of an actual game is gone in those times. They do have subtle music playing the entire game, but I don't really remember it being that good or bad. Forgettable seems like the right word to describe the music. Once you finally get to a battle, it shows a picture of the character you are playing and the moveset that you will use in said battle. The left analog stick moves the character, the right analog stick moves the camera, square is a punch, which you can also combo. Triangle is a shoulder charge or a hammer attack, depending on how far you get into the story. And both of those are usually combo finishers, but you can also use them by themselves. Circle is a roll forward or a counter. X is a stamina charge, and you can also combo X at the end of a punch combo, and it'll do various things. We'll get to that later. L1 is guarding. L2, auto face nears enemy. R1 is a Hammond power, R2 is an overdrive, and R3 pans the camera. You don't have any Hammond powers early, so the punch, overdrive, stamina charge, and counter do not work until you unlock said power by playing through the game. Fun fact, if you count how long it takes to get into the first battle from starting the game, it's somewhere like 10 minutes without skipping any text, and the trend continues throughout the entire game. Once you get into the battle, you could finally move around and do things. They decide to use a cell shaded art style, and it looks fairly good. Most of the stages you battle in are accurate to the anime, and I was impressed because of that. When you finally get control of Jonathan Joelstar, and you hit your first enemy, you realize that none of your attacks track to enemies. That means that if any part of your call misses, you are open to an attack. It's not like Dragon Ball, where you can get an automatic combo hit that tracks enemies. No, said you were left defenseless. I can get past that fact, but in some areas, it becomes frustrating. Another thing you will notice is along with enemies and Jonathan having health, they have regenerative health, almost like a stamina bar. The way it works is that if you get hit, your green health turns into red health, up to the amount of damage taken. And if you wait long enough, the health will fill up till the red is no more. If your bar turns full red, then you or the enemy will get knocked out. But if you get hit while damaged, your health bar will also decrease in size, limiting how much red health you can get back. One important factor in the later game is that almost every enemy that is non-human you need to use hammer power to defeat them, as even when their red health keeps getting damaged you will not kill the enemy. Hammond will electrify them and finish them if they are full red, usually. Sometimes you need to damage your health bar down lower to see this effect. Hammond is useful in a lot of ways, and even has its own stamina bar. First off, you can charge your fist with Hammond power if you hold down R1. It has three levels of charging, each level doing more damage. You can also use a special move called Overdrive. You press R2 when the heat meter is full on the top left. When you use the Overdrive, you single out an enemy and spin the right analog stick to do more damage to the enemy. Get the bar all the way to one side, you get a special attack that deals a fury of blows. I, however, no matter how hard I tried, could not get that meter full. No matter what I tried and how fast my fingers were, I couldn't get it to go off. Might be a side effect of working on an emulator, but even when I slowed down the game to 50%, I couldn't seem to do it. Another Hammond power is the counter, which while you are blocking with L1, if you are about to be hit and you press circle, you counter an enemy 
and stun them at the cost of some of your health turning to red health. The most important hammer power is the stamina recharge on the X button. Recharge your stamina bar, which you use for hammer attacks, and does a JoJo pose while you charge. You can press X after a combo, and depending on the amount of square presses, you can get a different power up. Them being recovery, defense, attack, and speed. All of which I did not use during my playthrough. I tried at certain points to get it to work, but in retrospect, I always did the combo wrong. There's also some special mechanics that happen in levels, which I will get to when I talk about the different story battles. So let's get right into the battles, shall we? Battle 1. Starts off with two hoodlums. It is easy enough, you just keep punching them until they pass out. Nothing too hard, just getting used to how slow the battles are. Actually, quite slow. Battle 2, you fight Dio in the boxing ring, and it's really annoying. From what I can tell, there are only really two types of AI in this game. One that will block an attack, and one that will only counterattack. That means that if you attack him at any point, they will block and counter if possible. The only real way I found to beat these enemies is to throw out one punch, then keep the block held, then just punch after they counter. In most cases, they will counter again or be hit by a full combo. And the reason I say this is that Dio is one of those AI. He just counters forever, basically. In my playthrough, I actually lost this battle, but in this case, it still progresses the story. Battle 3, you fight Dio again in the mansion. Nothing new if you use my counter trick. Battle 4 is, you guessed it, another Dio battle. Oh boy. Battle 5 is the first new battle where you fight Speedwagon with this group of two jockeys. It's the first challenging fight because you have to KO the side enemies first while Speedwagon tries to wail on you and throw his hat, dealing massive damage. In only a few combos, Speedwagon can chunk you and you basically just have to restart the fight. Battle 6, you fight two zombies as Jonathan while Dio tries to hit you. It's not very hard, but Dio can get in some good damage while you try to kill the zombies. Oh, you also have a spear, so yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Battle 7. You fight Dio while things are flame. There's a special mechanic that if you hit Dio into the flame, he gets set on fire, and that is really the best way to damage him. Other than that, it's just another Dio fight. Battle 8. You finally get to use Hammond power, and you just defeat some zombies and a big bad boy. Nothing special. Battle 9. You play as Will... Antonio Zeppli, and you just kill basic baddies. Plays very similar to Jonathan. Battle 10, you are back as Jonathan, and you fight this guy that just runs around constantly. You do get a little glass of blood that shows you where he is, but nonetheless, it's annoying trying to fight a guy that constantly runs. Battle 11, you just kind of kill 20 guys. Cool. Battle 12, you kill 15 baddies this time, but Dio constantly freezes you. This one actually took me a bit because dealing with a freeze boy, Dio, is not fun in the slightest. Battle 13 is a contender for one of the worst fights in the entire game. You play as Jonathan underwater trying to kill a guy that zips around. First of all, you move at the rate of a snail and also need to air to live. You need to constantly be near these air bubbles and wait for the enemy to jump to you and block his combo. After you block his combo, you need to be perpendicular to the enemy then try to attack him. First problem is that when he hits you, he also knocks you back so you have to snail walk to him. About 50% of the time your full combo doesn't hit and he does a counter attack which can seriously hurt you. Overall not fun. Battle 14, you fight Waterman but on land this time. You can do some serious damage, but it's not nearly as bad as the fight in the water. Battle 15, you play a speed wagon. He is special in that he does not have any hammer powers, but his hammer can kill undead if he powers up his hammer with R1. It's a very special stage in that it's timed, and not only that, you have to walk around in the stage. The stage has spikes to go away when you kill a group of enemies, and there's about 5 checkpoints of spikes to go through in 500 seconds. All in all, it's not very hard, but you have to spam Speedwagon's R1 hammer tech so much, it becomes very unfun. You kill about 20 enemies, and none of it feels fun or worthwhile, just repetitive. Battle 16, you play as Will Antonio Zebri again. 
and you fight a giant man. This is where I realized Hammond powers were OP. You can just press triangle when not in a square punch combo and it stuns enemies in an AoE. It's the best way to damage and stun enemies and I use it constantly. Other than that, the boss is fine, it just took me a few tries. Battle 17, you fight Big Boy as Jonathan, but for real this time. Battle 18 is just another basic battle, killing basic enemies. Battle 19 is another boss-like fight, but I think it wants you to lose. So I did, and just went on to the next battle. Battle 20, you fight advanced basic enemies that can now poison you in fight. Nice. Battle 21, you fight more advanced basic enemies, but this time, 10 of them. Battle 22, you play a Stryzo and fight four bigger, badder advanced basic enemies. From what I could tell, he felt OP and he has a lot of good combo moves. Battle 23, you fight Dio but with a sword this time. Also, there are enemies about the room. For some reason, Dio felt a lot more tankier than before. Battle 24 is another Dio fight, but he can freeze you again. You can also punch fire to get fire hands that do more damage to Dio. Also, there is a basic enemy strewn about. So it took me quite a while and was fairly hard. Battle 25. You are an injured Jonathan, and Dio is just ahead. You can't restore your hand power, so you just slowly wobble towards the enemy while Dio shoots eye lasers. You have to finish the fight off with an overdrive. That is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood. Or mostly, anyways. You officially defeated the story mode, but there are some other modes to play as well. There's a theater mode to watch cutscenes over if you truly please, and character battles for all the characters in the story, but I don't really count those as they're not very important. First of all, there's an extra battle mode, where you can play as random characters through the story, and fight whoever they tell you to. There's 32 battles in all. Second of all, if you finish all the extra battles, there's 77 Rings Night Mode, where you fight 77 enemies in a row. And that's about it. Lastly, there is Dio Mode, where you unlock this if you finish 77 Rings Night Mode. This is a mode where you guessed it, you play as Dio during the events of the story. You fight battles as Dio, fighting the good side. I didn't do any of the extra modes, but hey, they're there if you truly want more of this slow fighting action. And that concludes JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood. In all, I didn't enjoy the game very much. Didn't have any good gameplay, and the story sections were bland. The JoJo aesthetic wore off very fast. I would not recommend that you play this game, but if you really want to, I say just skip all the dialogue and try out the fights. I personally give this game a 2 out of 5. It is playable, but often repetitive and boring with no real reason to actually play the game, even for enthusiasts. I hope you enjoyed my new series. I hope to review a lot more uncommon and obscure games. Leave a like if you like it, and uh, subscribe. Hope you have a good day.